Hey kids, welcome to lesson 14, building an app image scroller, buttons and keys. We now know how to respond to key events, but often we want the user to be able to do the same thing with the app in multiple ways. For example, we might want the app to exhibit the same behavior if the user clicks a button on the screen or a key on the keyboard. This is how so-called keyboard shortcuts work. In this program you're about to see, we've provided event handlers for some buttons on the screen. You are going to create identical functionality for the key events. This means it looks like they gave us a lot of the code and we are just going to reuse it. We have a do this. Add conditional statements inside the key down event handler to check for when the up and down arrows are pressed. Looks like we have some example code here. Copy the code for the up image button and paste it into the up arrow if statement. This looks like it was talking about earlier and we are taking some code and pasting it or reusing it. Copy the code for the down button and paste it into the down arrow of the if statement. Confirm your app response to key events by running it. For example, clicking on the image of the up arrow in the app should do the same thing as hitting the up arrow on the keyboard. Woo! This sounds scary, but I promise you kids, it is not. Before we get started here, let's go ahead and take a look at our code and see what's going on. We right now have a variable count that is equal to zero. We are setting the text to count label, that's this numbers right here, to count, which is currently zero. On the event, the up image is clicked. We're going to play a sound. We're going to add one to the count, set text of the count label to count. So it's going to add one there and we're going to update it. And then we want to spit out in our debug console the word up. Down image looks almost exactly the same. On the event, the down image is clicked. We're going to play a sound. We're going to take one away from the count, set text of count label to count and display down in our debug console. Then we have on the event screen one key down, something's happening and it's event. I know I can get rid of that event right there. We are not going to need that. Whew, this looks like a lot to do. Let's go up here and take a look. Well, the first thing we need to do is add conditional statements inside the key down event handler. Let's go find the key down. Well, key down is right here. Let's comment this out so it's easier for us. Key down right there. On the event screen one, key down is pressed. What are we going to do? What this is saying key down is when the key down is pressed. And this is where we're going to put our if statement. What am I going to put? Well, if event dot key is going to be equal to up. This is a lot like the lesson we just did. Then what's going to happen? We want to play the sounds from the up one. So let's go up here and Comment this one out too. This is my up image. And right now it's playing this sound and doing all of this. So we're going to copy this part here, come down here and paste it. Because this is all in my statement, I need another brace there to end it. Let's make some distinctions here. I don't want to put up, I want to put keyboard up on this one. This will just let me know that it is reading the right thing and I know my code is working the exact same way. I think that takes care of my up key. Now we have to take care of our down key. How do we do that? Well, in my last lesson, we used an else if statement. And this one is going to be almost identical on event or when event key, let's spell this right, is pressed or equal to down, 
make sure the spelling is correct, we want something to happen. What is that something? Well, let's go back up here to our down image. Let's comment this out, down image. We want this to happen right here, the play the sound, all that fun stuff we copied from before. So I'm gonna put this in here. And in this one, it is minus minus or dash dash, and that should take it away. I have one of my braces here, closing it up, and a brace, a parentheses, and a semicolon to wrap everything up with a nice, tidy bow. I think now, when the key, this shouldn't be key down, this should be key pressed for our comment. When the key pressed up is happening, we should get one added to our counter and it should play a sound. Opposite, when we press the down key, should play a different sound and subtract one from our counter. That means if I use this image here or press up, the same thing should happen. Well, let's test this out. Let's hit run. We're down to zero. We get sounds going up and down. That works pressing the image. The hard part, though, is using the keyboard. Let's try the up. Uh-oh, we got an error. Let's take a look here. Hmm. What error is that? Well, remember when I took out that event earlier? I actually think I needed that event there. So we need to re-put that event back to the function because that's what we're looking for here. My error was just taking out the event that they supplied to us originally. Let's clear this and try one more time. Reset run. Up works. Down works. Up key. Keyboard up. And down. Looks like we forgot to put keyboard down on our down, keyboard down. Let's reset run here, keyboard down, keyboard up. When I press left or right, nothing happens. Any of the other keys, nothing happens. Select the image, get my sound, same thing with my down. Looks like my code is working there. All I had to do was to put my event back into the function. This is something you'll see pop up every once in a while. In some of the previous lessons, this actually threw us an error. Now we're going to start using it. So if you are getting an error, just check after your function to make sure there is an event there. Looking back up to our do this, we added a conditional statement inside the key down event handler for the up and down errors. We copy the code for the up image button, put it into the up image, copy the code for the down button, put it into our down key, and then confirmed that this responded to the keys and not the images. A lot to do, but it wasn't too bad. I think we got everything done. Let's see if code.org wants anything else from us. No. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.